la trayectoria, los pronósticos. Eh, de nuevo, desde esta mañana, 64 personas se han registrado para asistencia. Le agradecemos no solo los, las agencias estatales, pero también FIMA por, por su ayuda, su asistencia, que sigue siendo esencial para todo lo, lo que es el, el trabajo que tienen adelante. También hemos proveído eh, no solo PPE, pero también botas de refuerzo, eh, otro tipo de ropa para nuestros socorristas. Esto va a seguir continuando siendo eh, una misión del Estado. Eh, desde esta mañana, el Departamento de Transporte ha retirado más de 170 camiones cargados de material de construcción eh, del sitio con un peso total de más de 1,600 toneladas. Eh, nuestro Departamento de Oportunidades Económicas eh, de la Florida ha completado más de 28 evaluaciones de los negocios impactados. Y como siempre, le agradecemos a los equipos, les agradecemos a todos los que están trabajando en esta tarea que cada día se pone más y más duro, más y más difícil. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. And now, Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> I had a chance to meet with a number of the families this morning, uh, both survivor families as well as, uh, as well as families that are still struggling to know about the result with their, uh, with their own family members. And I can tell you that both following yesterday's visit by President Biden, meeting for three hours with, with the families, and then their, their sense today that there is so much more relief and reassurance and comfort following his visit. That, uh, you know, the role of consoler in chief is, uh, is so important, and it's one that President Biden really does better than no one, better than no one else. I particularly want to stress his proactive announcement that the, f the federal government would provide 100% reimbursement for the next 30 days. I, I know I began talking about that and the impact on the budget for little towns like Surfside and even the county, as the governor mentioned, uh, knowing that those costs are going to be taken care of 100% in the first 30 days of this crisis is, is really important. And it takes, it takes a load and a burden off of our, uh, of our government's here that are responding. Um, I want to also emphasize uh, that with the potential onset of a hurricane, you know, we all take, we're certainly taking a whole of government approach to this. We always take a whole of government approach to when a hurricane potentially is going to hit our shores. So making sure that you're ready, that, uh, that, that you prepare for, for a hurricane, the hurricane possibly coming now, and make sure that you have your seven days of supplies and get your, uh, get your house and your personal belongings in order and make sure that you have a plan to keep yourself safe if it does come closer to our shores. And then lastly, just something really important, because as time goes on in a disaster, you know, we often have the bureaucracy start to set in, and we're talking about people here, so we want to make sure that they have accurate information at the mobile office hours that I have at the Family Assistance Center and talking with families yesterday. They're starting to be concerned. Some of them are staying in hotels, and you know, the time for them to stay in a hotel is going to run out, and they want to know how can they get access to the federal relief if they don't qualify for federal relief, which if they're not citizens and don't have a U.S. citizen child, then they wouldn't. Uh, where can they get access to the charitable relief? Because the charitable relief has be, been so incredibly generous. Everyone who needs access to the individual assistance or help from FEMA or from the charities that have been working to assist families would do so at the Family Assistance Center. Make sure if you're a family in need that has been impacted by the collapse to go to the Family Assistance Center, register with the Family Assistance Center if you have not done so, done so already, and also make sure that you register with FEMA, which you can also do at the Family Assistance Center. And then, you know, our office is always available, and we have, I have staff uh, on the ground at the Family Assistance Center to help cut through any of the red tape. Thank you so much. Thank you, Congresswoman. Now Miami-Dade County Mayor, Daniela Levine Cava. Here we are, day nine. Yesterday evening, just before 5 p.m., the search and rescue mission was able to resume operations, as you all know, following the engineer's evaluation. Our first responders have been hard at work, as they have been this entire time, continuing to search through the pile that is accessible to them. 
And last night we did discover two additional victims. Tragically, one of those victims was the seven-year-old daughter of a City of Miami firefighter. And it goes without saying that every night since this last Wednesday has been immensely difficult for everybody and particularly the families that have been impacted. But last night was uniquely different. It was truly dif different and more difficult for our first responders. These men and women are paying an enormous human toll each and every day. And I ask that all of you please keep all of them in your thoughts and prayers. They truly represent the very best in all of us and we need to be there for them as they are here for us. With these developments last night, we now have contacted, oh no, excuse me, we have now confirmed 20 deaths. 188 people are accounted for and 128 are unaccounted for. And you'll notice that the number of accounted for people has increased, which is of course good news. And it is one of the reasons, one of the reasons that it has increased is that in some cases in which we originally received a report of a potentially missing person, that report was only marked as one person. But when the detectives were able to reach and verify the safety of the person in question, we discover that there are, in fact, several family members who could have been counted for uh, potentially in the building, and now we can mark them as safe. So this is very, very good news. Again, that's 188 people accounted for. Our detectives are continually conducting an ongoing audit of this list as we verify every single angle, every single report, so that these numbers will continue to change. As we've said all along, they're fluid and you can understand exactly why. Our engineers and our Miami-Dade Fire team have continued to evaluate and test the site as they work to expand the search area as quickly as possible and as it becomes safe to do so. We're proceeding with our evaluation of all of the factors all of the time and the impacts related to the demolition of the building while the search and rescue continues as our top priority. And it is important to stress, as our engineer explained yesterday evening, that a demolition cannot be done overnight. In fact, it takes weeks to demolish a building. We continue to aggressively monitor what is now Hurricane Elsa. We could potentially feel sustained tropical storm force winds as early as Sunday midday. We'll be joined by our weather service and our department incident commander, Charles Cyril, and our Florida Department of Emergency Management Director, Kevin Guthrie, to provide more detail on our preparedness for the site and our storm prep for the entire community. So please stay tuned. I want to once again remind everybody here in South Florida that hurricane season is very much upon us and it's important to make sure that you have a plan in place and that you take pre key precautions at home. Everyone must prepare now for the eventuality of a storm. As we've been saying all along, the level of coordination and collaboration between Miami-Dade County, the state of Florida, the city of Surfside, the federal government, and all of our local partners is truly unprecedented. This is truly unprecedented, and we know the world is watching. This has been the largest non-hurricane-related emergency mobilization of resources in the history of our state and it would not be possible without the ongoing cooperation and commitment of everybody on the ground. So please, let's all continue to keep the victims, their families, our first responders in your thoughts and prayers. Thank you and God bless. Aquí estamos en el día nueve. Ayer por la noche alrededor de las, a las cinco de la tarde, la misión de búsqueda y rescate pudo reanudar sus operaciones después de la evaluación de los ingenieros y nuestros primeros en responder 
han estado trabajando arduamente como siempre para continu continuar buscando en la parte de la pila a la que tienen acceso. Anoche recuperamos a dos víctimas más. Trágicamente, una de estas víctimas era la hija de siete años de un bombero de la ciudad de Miami. No hace falta decir que todas las noches desde el miércoles pasado han sido inmensamente difíciles para todos, especialmente para las familias afectadas. Pero anoche fue especialmente difícil para nuestros socorristas. Mi corazón está con ellos. Con estos desarrollos de anoche, ahora tenemos 20 muertes confirmadas, 188 personas contabilizadas y 128 desaparecidas. Notará que el número de personas contabilizadas ha aumentado. Esto es una buena noticia, muy buena noticia. Una de las razones por las que este, este número ha aumentado es que en algunos casos, cuando recibimos regionalmente un informe de una persona potencialmente desaparecida, ese informe solo se marcó con una persona, pero cuando los detectives pueden llegar y verificar la seguridad de la persona en cuestión, descubrimos que de hecho hay varios miembros de la familia que potencialmente podrían haber estado en el edificio, pero no lo estaban y están, marca y están marcados como seguros ahora. Y esas son muy, muy buenas noticias para todos. Estamos procediendo con nuestra evaluación de todos los factores y impactos relacionados con la demolición del edificio mientras la búsqueda y rescate continúan como nuestra principal prioridad. Es importante enfatizar, como explicó nuestro ingeniero ayer, que una demolición no, puede, no se puede hacer de la noche a la mañana. De hecho, se, necesita, se necesitan semanas, semanas para, para demoler un edificio. También continuamos, continuamos monitoreando agresivamente lo que ahora es el huracán Elsa. Huracán Elsa. Potencialmente podríamos sentir vientos sostenidos con fuerza de tormenta tropical tan temprano como el domingo al mediodía. Una vez más, quiero recordarles a todos aquí en el sur de la Florida, es la temporada de huracanes y es muy importante asegurarse de tener un plan y tomar las precauciones en serio. Por favor, continúe manteniendo a las víctimas, sus familias y todos nuestros socorristas en sus pensamientos y oraciones. Gracias y Dios te bendiga. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And now City of Miami Mayor Francis Suarez. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you to all who have collaborated and cooperated uh, on this uh, terrifying few days that we've been um, here. Um, I can confirm, as, as the governor and the mayor have stated, that the City of Miami Fire Department has lost uh, a seven-year-old daughter of one of our own firefighters. Uh, she was recovered last night by members of our Urban Search and Rescue Team in Florida Task Force 2. Um, our chief is asking that all of you respect the privacy of the immediate family as well as our fire department, which is understandably grieving tremendously. I'm the father of two children. I have a seven-year-old son, and uh, it, the thought of losing him in this way is unimaginable uh, for me and my family, and I think this tragedy has haunted so many of us because so many of us have know someone who has been uh, in the building or affected by this tragedy. And so now, uh, not only do we know someone, this is someone that's a member of our, of our family, of our fire family. So um, that's why I'm here today. Estoy aquí agradecido a los esfuerzos de todos, particularmente los bomberos que están de búsqueda y rescate que están cada día arduadamente tratando de rescatar a personas atrapadas en el edificio. Puedo confirmar, como ha confirmado la alcaldesa Condal y el gobernador, que perdimos 
la hija de un miembro de nuestra familia de bomberos. Eh, fue rescatada, fue eh, conseguida por eh, un miembro del de equipo de búsqueda y rescate nuestro eh, y del el Task Force Flora número 2. Eh, le pedimos a todos ustedes en la prensa eh, que por favor respeten la, privac eh, la privacidad del de bombero y de nuestro departamento de bomberos que obviamente están eh, severamente afectados en este momento. Yo, siendo eh, padre de dos hijos, uno de siete años también, no puedo comprender ni imaginar la pérdida que está sintiendo en este momento el miembro de nuestra familia en la ciudad de Miami. Así que eh, esta tragedia que ha tocado las vidas de tantas personas, eh, no solo directamente, pero tanto por las razones que alguien conoce a alguien que está en el edificio afectado por esta tragedia, ha sido algo... Eh, que en este momento está afectando íntimamente a la ciudad de Miami y por esa razón me encuentro aquí hoy. Eh, de nuevo les pido sus oraciones y también les pido eh, privacidad eh, por la familia y por nuestro departamento. Gracias. Thank you, Mayor Suárez. From the National Weather Service, Robert Moriera. Good morning. Uh, we continue to closely monitor Hurricane Elsa as it moves over the Caribbean Sea this weekend. Uh, by late Sunday or early Monday, we expect that the storm will be emerging off the coast of Cuba and approaching or getting pretty close to Florida during the uh, Monday to Tuesday time frame. So as the uh, mayor and the governor said earlier, the tropical storm force winds could begin as early as Sunday here in South Florida, most likely based on the official forecast it would be Monday and possibly even into Tuesday. So we do have this weekend to prepare for the possibility of tropical storm conditions at least. Uh, there's still a lot of uncertainty as you've heard, uh, there's still a lot of uncertainty in the forecast, how it will evolve, how the storm will interact with the land areas that, that are to our south and that could affect the, not only the intensity or how strong the storm is, but also uh, the, the, the track that it takes. So right now, we're, 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 we'll continue to closely monitor the storm. We'll be providing, of course, advisories every six hours. And uh, just to, to be ready, uh, look over our preparedness plans this weekend and be ready for, it, for the potential of tropical storm conditions along with heavy rainfall uh, early next week. Brevemente en español estamos siguiendo siguiendo de, de monitorear el huracán Elsa que está sobre el mar Caribe se espera que que, que atraviese el mar Caribe este fin de semana posiblemente para tarde el, el, el domingo o temprano el lunes ya eh, acercándose un poco más hacia la Florida eh, los posibles impactos si nos afecta aquí en el sur de la Florida sería eh, posiblemente tan pronto como el domingo pero más probablemente el lunes y también posiblemente hasta el martes. O sea, eh, tenemos algunos días eh, este fin de semana para prepararnos para, la, para un posible impacto. Todavía hay bastante incertidumbre en cuanto a la trayectoria que va a tomar eh, esta tormenta y también con, con qué fuerza eh, o qué fuerza va a tener. Pero simplemente es, eh, para, eh, hay, hay que seguir vigilando el, 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 el sistema como lo vamos a hacer nosotros, y nosotros vamos a pasar esa información a todos ustedes eh, con, con los informes que cada seis horas. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Mr. Mollera. Now, Division Director for Office of Emergency Management, Deputy Incident Commander, Charles Cyril. Good morning, everyone. With Hurricane Elsa strengthening into Category 1 hurricane, the Miami-Dade County Office of Emergency Management and the Florida Division of Emergency Management are working together to assess all potential impacts as it approaches. As we enter the holiday weekend, please ensure you monitor the progress of this storm and begin your personal preparedness. Make sure you have three to seven days of supplies on hand for each person, each person in your home. Additionally, residents are urged to begin securing their home in preparation for potential impacts. Any objects that can easily be blown away by a hurricane winds should begin to be secured, either tied down 
or brought indoors. Examples are garbage cans, patio furniture, etc. And be sure to take, three, take tree trimmings to your local trash and recycling center. It is critically important that these preparatory activities begin today. Also, be sure that your emergency equipment, such as hurricane shelters, shutters, and battery-powered radios are working and are in order. Please test them today. Find out if you live in an evacuation zone, know your zone, and as always, the 311 contact center is available for any questions. If you would like more information, please visit miamidade.gov slash emergency. Miami-Dade County officials will continue to monitor the storm and will ensure any advisories in conjunction with the National Weather Service as they become necessary. Stay informed of all latest developments by downloading the Ready MDC app. Of course, the ongoing search and rescue mission, as well as providing support for the afflicted families, remains our highest priority. Our Family Assistance Center is open from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m., seven days a week. There are currently 26 organizations there providing services to the families and their surviving and survivors. Uh, mental health, grief counseling, financial lodging, travel, and many other services to those in need are being provided to date. Currently, there are 63 families that have been served. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sorrell. And now in Spanish, on behalf of the Deputy Incident Commander, Miami-Dade Fire Rescue, Director of Media and Public Relations, Eric Abenitz. Muy buenos días. Como ya saben todos, estamos en plena temporada de huracanes y al entrar este fin de semana festivo, queremos que se aseguren de comenzar sus planes de preparación personales. Asegure de tener todos los suministros disponibles por lo menos de 3 a 7 días. Además, instamos a todos los residentes a mantenerse informados eh, descargando la aplicación de Ready MDC para más información. También los residentes deben comenzar a proteger sus hogares en este momento. Cualquier objeto que pueda ser arrastrado fácilmente por el viento debe comenzar ya a asegurarlo desde ahora. Eh, lleve los recortes de árbol a un centro de reciclaje y basura local. Además, asegúrese de que su, su equipo de emergencia como contraventanas para huracanes, además radios de batería y todo lo que puede llegar a necesitar en estos casos esté listo y preparado. También averigüe si usted vive en una zona de evacuación. Como siempre, el centro de información o de contacto, el 311, está disponible para cualquier pregunta que tengan sobre la, pre la preparación para este fin de semana. Además, si desea obtener más información sobre estos planes de preparación, puede visitar miamidate.gov barra oblicua emergency. Los funcionarios del condado de Miami-Dade continúan monitoreando la tormenta y emitirán cualquier aviso necesario eh, para mantenerlos informados. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Erica. And now Surfside Mayor Charles Burkett. Good morning, everybody. Uh, as I usually do now, um, early this morning I spent uh, a good amount of time at the site. I also uh, uh, went up to the uh, family briefing and I have a couple messages uh, from there. Uh, Chief Brian Rafsky has done a stupend stupendous job arranging for the families to be moved around this town and being able to obtain the services that we're offering. They've uh, instituted bus uh, uh, trams and the families can now just hop on and hop off and get to where they need easily, which is a, a great step forward. Uh, with respect to the uh, maximum effort that's being put forward by Search and Rescue, I want to personally commend Chief Ray Jadilla for working 20 hours a day and sleeping four hours a night since the beginning of this. He's the only guy that I see uh, well, I should take that back. He's the guy that I always see when I'm here, and I'm here a lot. Okay, I'm sleeping a little more than four hours a night. It's probably up to five and a half or six. But uh, Ray has been a, uh, a beacon, a rock, a source of hope for the families. He's there at those briefings every single day, answering very tough questions. 
he he is passionate he's compassionate he's understanding and he's most importantly he's flexible he's heard the direction from the county mayor he's heard the direction from the state officials from the governor he's heard the uh, directions from the president and he's following them he's not letting bureaucratic roadblocks get in the way the uh, the support for the families is unparalleled. It really is. It's astounding how wonderful and beautiful um, our, our resources, our county resources, our local resources, all the municipalities that are joining together. It's like a chorus, and it's just playing beautifully. I mean, the, and, and I can tell you from firsthand experience that the families appreciate it and acknowledge it, and they do it over and over again in those meetings. So there's not any dissatisfaction that I've been able to detect, um, and I'm looking for that. Because my role here is, I've got a very small role, but I, I make it a point to be where everybody is so that if there is a problem, I can bring it up to uh, County Mayor Cava, I can bring it up to Florida Governor DeSantis, and I can make our senators aware. And that's what I've been doing, and that's been working because when there has been a glitch, it has been immediately uh, addressed. I want to personally call out and thank Governor DeSantis and Governor, uh, Lieutenant Governor Jeanette Nunez for being in Surfside as much as they are in Surfside. It's very difficult for them to run the state of Florida, but also spend as much time as they do here. Uh, I can tell you uh, from the town of Surfside, and I imagine from the families, and the residents of South Florida, we are all very, very grateful and it's super reassuring to see their faces all the time around this disaster. I wanna also congratulate, listen, we had a very difficult situation yesterday where the work was stopped and there was incredible pressure on Mayor Cava, incredible. Um, I know for a fact that I was asking a lot of hard questions and she was rock solid. She, uh, she, she did what she needed to do and she got that work started up again. And I know the families and everybody else is very thankful for that. And we praise her, uh, her leadership skills. Uh, a lot of people have called about animals in the building. They're concerned. It's, it's not one or two people. I get calls and emails all the time and they want to know uh, uh, whether or not we can get in there to rescue the animals. I will say that I know for a fact that that building has been covered at least three times by the brave men and women of the search and rescue teams up and down looking for anything alive. And to this point, I haven't heard that they're, they've seen anything. Moreover, um, I heard today that uh, there are drones flying around inside that building also looking. And I know that uh, if there were issues with respect to animals in there, uh, that we would probably hear about it. So for those folks that are really worried and losing sleep over that, just know that your county officials have that in mind and uh, are not uh, discounting that. Last thing I wanna do, uh, two more things. I just wanna tell you that I'm meeting today with the displaced families from uh, Champlain South um, who were immediately taken care of. Again, the, 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 uh, the work that the county has done in conjunction with the state authorities and the federal authorities is really something I think that's gonna come out later on after we get over the shock and horror of this collapse. But, and we're not gonna to talk too much about it, but suffice to say, it is working. Government is working. Most people don't see government working a lot, but right here, right now, government is working and I'm gonna meet with the displaced families. They've asked me to come over and talk to them, so I'm gonna make sure that they're getting everything they need, and if they're not, I'm gonna make sure they do. Last thing, uh, Champlain North, the building that's substantially the same as the building that came down, the same construction, the same developer, the same name, probably the same materials. Um, people are worried, some people are especially worried, and we have made arrangements for them to be relocated further. Our building official, in conjunction with our experts, are now getting ready to x-ray columns and do a deep dive, a forensic study into the structure take that data back, plug it into the models, and get to the point where we can definitively tell the people that are living there whether or not we think there's an issue or not, which I'm hopeful will give our residents a little more peace of mind. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And now for Creole translation, Lionel Larable.
Bonjour tout le monde. Hier soir, nous continuons le travail genre que nous avons toujours fait et c'est une découverte de nouveaux victimes. Une victime, malheureusement, c'est une fille qui a 7 années et qui a perdu la vie. Papa lui a travaillé comme pompier, comme agent pompier dans Miami Dade. Nous connaissons comment ça a été difficile pour toute équipe là pour faire la découverte. Ça. Nous demandons pour, nous, pour continuer à prier pour eux de côté par eux. Victime nous, c'est une victime qui sorti tout partout, ce n'est pas une victime au quartier ni en comté seulement, elle sorti tout partout dans le monde. Pour le moment, nous avons nous compté 20 morts, nous avons 188 que nous joignons et nous avons 128 personnes que nous pouvons joindre toujours. Pour le moment, les ingénieurs avec l'équipe pompier travaillent pour être capables d'évaluer, de sorte que nous capable d'évaluer et de joindre qui sont capables d'étendre la zone de recherche que nous avons fait. Pour le moment, il a évalué tout qui est capable d'attaquer la question de démolition pour le fait pour la vie de ne pas mettre en danger encore. Nous avons suivi comment Elsa a évolué. Elle est sortie de niveau tempête tropicale et passé dans le niveau ouragan. Et dimanche, à la mi-journée, probablement nous sommes capables de gagner de forts de fort vents et peut-être de fortes pluies. Pour le moment, nous avons demandé à tout le monde songer que nous avons une saison cyclone et saison cyclone c'est le moment que tout le monde doit préparer pour conséquence cyclone. Nous tous connaissons, fais attention et protéger la tête, nous, protéger la vie. Nous. Merci. Thank you, Mr. Lerbo. Now we're going to be opening up for questions. Please address it to the, who the question is for and then. Yes, uh, in regards to, to the hurricane, you know, now another significant obstacle in the horizon uh, heading this direction. Uh, so yes, we have engineers, uh, we have an established engineer group. We've had them on site uh, from the beginning with our USAR teams. Uh, now we've incorporated more engineers, so we're using our state and federal assets as well, uh, and then as well as our county assets locally. Uh, so we have an engineer team uh, which develop in all different plans. Uh, we have more equipment now monitoring, so we brought more resources in the other day. Uh, where we're continuing. Uh, as I stated, uh, our, you know, from the incident when this began, uh, it's just so challenging. So many different obstacles, one after the other. And that building standing definitely has, has been a huge obstacle and the hazards that, it, you know, for our men and women that are out there working. Uh, you know, as a fire chief, that's my, my top priority, saving lives and protecting our personnel. And that goes hand in hand. So it's a delicate balance and very, very difficult decisions at time to make. Uh, for the wind storms, I mean, we'll monitor and we'll have to see if the direction of the storm and how close it gets, and then we'll have to make the necessary precautions and modifications to our plan. And then also, I mean, I do want to comment to the second question. You know, every every victim we remove, it, it's difficult. It's very difficult. Uh, we try to respect. We have a whole process in regards to how we remove each individual that we come across. You know, unfortunately. You know, we haven't been able to remove any survivors yet, you know, but it's very difficult. And, and last night was even more, you know, when we're removing a fellow firefighter's daughter. And, and that's just where I want to emphasize uh, the emotion, you know, what we're feeling. You know, as, as firefighters, we do what we do, you know, and, and it's kind of a calling, and we always say that. And, uh, but it still takes a toll, you know, and that's why you see more resources coming through. You know, our, our brave men and women of our Florida task force, you know, we've been going you know, non-stop. And so it's, you know, it's nice with our federal resources coming through and this has always, you know, been the plan. You know, I just was hoping that we've uh, had some survivors so far. Chief, Chief, just, just to follow up on that, first of all, I'm so sorry about your, your team member's child. Timeline for it, I know you're not releasing names, but how is the whole team dealing with it? How is he doing and their family? Follow up to that. How do you all keep from avoiding the word recovery at this point? Well, I mean, obviously the firefighters are are emotional. 
you know, I'm not going to disclose anything and, you know, res I'm in, in a respect for the family, but, you know, it takes a toll. You know, it takes a toll. You know, in, in regards to keep going, it's how we evaluate what, what we look for, you know, certain aspects. So, you know, we, we know we still have several, several individuals missing, and that's kind of our primary focus to, to see if, uh, you know, we have a survivor. Question right here. Well, I mean, it was Florida Task Force 2. We're out there in different work groups. So out of the work groups that go through, um, you know, they were part. Uh, the father wasn't part of, of that process, but obviously was notified. And, you know, we, we don't stop because we're searching, but we do make modifications. And, and we do that each group. You know, each rescue group, when we come across an individual, you know, obviously we pay our respect. Uh, we have a process. I'm not going to go into details, but with different religious faiths, we have a process that we started from, from the very, very beginning, and we comply with that. So it's, it's obviously with police and homicide involved, and there are multiple steps. You know, we'll definitely disclose what we did at a later time. I don't think now's the time. Um, but definitely I want to emphasize we, you know, we do that and we honor all the loved ones that, that we've lost. So we've had a couple of meetings with the engineers. Uh, they've, they're meeting regularly to look at exactly what would be the process, and we are going to move expeditiously. But it will t we're going to move expeditiously on decision making, but it will take some time for the demolition to occur. Thank you, Mr. Last question. Bueno, no voy a entrar en detalles, obviamente, eh, por la privacidad que queremos darle a la familia en este momento de gran duelo, pero eh, como padres de familia y aquellas personas que tienen hijos pueden imaginarse en el dolor, es desgarrador lo que pasó aquí y aún más si es tan cercano, algo tan, tan cercano como un hijo. Eh, estos, estas personas, estos rescatistas que están arriesgando sus propias vidas no dejan de ser humanos. El, el hecho de encontrar un hijo, una hija eh, en estas condiciones es, es desgarrador, es fuertísimo, es, es escalofriante el pensar, eh, pasar por un momento así y me imagino y como cualquier otra persona, eh, es un momento el cual no se le desea a nadie, especialmente cuando ellos están aquí salvando vidas y llegar a un momento donde no poder salvar la vida de, de un ser tan cercano como su propio hijo es desgarrador y esto como seres humanos llega muy adentro del alma. I just want to emphasize that for all of us here and across the world, we know that this entire process is as if it were our own children, our own parents, our own sisters and brothers and grandparents. That's how it is every day here and around the world. Thank you. Que quiero decir y agradecer que todos sabemos que puede ser nuestros hijos, nuestros padres, hermanos, abuelos y sabemos que el mundo entero está con nosotros. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you everyone.